these last couple of weeks have been very tough on Red Wings fans, and here on the channel, we've talked a good bit about this recent stretch that Detroit has been on, so today, I wanted to change things up and make a video focusing on one of the more positive aspects of the Detroit Red Wings organization, and that is the prospect pool. This is a team that is slowly starting to crawl out of what has been a long and grueling rebuild after completely bottoming out in the 2019-20 season. The Red Wings have continued to improve season after season. Season, and despite the fact that they have lost seven of their last eight games, they currently find themselves in the thick of the wildcard hunt. Now, even though the Red Wings have been rebuilding for a long time, they're not one of the younger teams in the NHL, especially when you compare them to other rebuilding teams across the league. However, the Red Wings do currently have a prospect pool that is widely regarded as a top five system in the NHL, and Red Wings fans are hoping that a lot of the guys we're going to talk about in this video are going to be key factors in taking this team to the next level. In this video, I'm only going to be ranking the Red Wings top five prospects. I am aware that they have a really deep prospect pool, so I want to give out some honorable mentions to guys that I did strongly consider to have in the top five. The two big ones are Sebastian Costa and Trey Augustine, the two top goaltending prospects in the Red Wings system, just missed out on my list. A couple of other names that I strongly considered, William Willinder, Amadeus Lombardi, Dmitry Buchelnikov, Elmer Soderblom. Those are all names that would have cracked my list, say, if this was a top 10, but for the sake of keeping this video easily digestible, I just wanted to rank my top five prospects. So with that all being said, let's go ahead and get into this list. Starting off at number five, I have Carter Mazur. Mazur was a third round draft pick, 70th overall by the Red Wings in 2021 out of the USHL. Carter Mazur would go on to play two seasons with the University of Denver following his draft year, where he would quickly establish himself as one of the Red Wings' better prospects. He finished his career with the University of Denver right around a point per game, 36 goals, 75 points in 81 games. He turned turned pro following the conclusion of his collegiate season last year where he would play six games with Grand Rapids before the regular season ended and in those six games he had six points. He's been a very impactful player for Grand Rapids this season as well as he's tied for second on the team in goals with 15 and he's second on the team in points only behind Jonathan Berggren. He's a high energy, high compete kind of player, not afraid to play with some bite, doesn't shy away from playing the role of an agitator either. I know a lot of Red Wings fans in the past have made the player comparison to Tyler Bertuzzi where he may not have have the upside to be a star at the NHL level, but his mix of high compete high hockey IQ, heavy shot and nose for the net, I think makes Carter Mazur a pretty safe bet at this point to at the very least be a very solid two-way middle six winger for the Red Wings in the very near future. Out of all the prospects that I have in my top five, I would say Carter Mazur probably has the lowest ceiling, but also maybe the highest floor. I think I would be more surprised at this point to see Carter Mazur fizzle out and not become an NHL regular than I would be to see him become an impactful middle six player for the Red Wings as soon as next season. Moving along now to the number four ranked prospect on my list, we have 19-year-old centerman Marco Casper, who was the Red Wings' eighth overall draft pick from 2022. He actually has already made his NHL debut. He got into the Red Wings lineup towards the end of last year's regular season after his season in the SHL ended. Unfortunately, in his NHL debut, Marco Casper got injured, so he only got into the one game. The sample size of him at the NHL is next to nothing. He has played the entirety of this season in the American Hockey League for Grand Rapids, where he definitely got off to a a bit of a slow start offensively, but as the season has gone along, you can tell he's starting to get much more confident with the puck, a lot less passive. When he gets the puck in his stick, he's looking to make plays. He currently ranks sixth on Grand Rapids in points with 27 in 57 games. 13 of those 27 points have came in the last 23 games, so for a large part of the second half of the season, Casper has been scoring at above a half point per game pace. That being said, the offensive aspect of Marco Casper's game isn't even the biggest reason why he is such a highly thought of prospect in the Red Wings system. The biggest appeal when it comes to Marco Casper's game at this point is how well-rounded and polished of a game he has as just a 19-year-old centerman. He plays a very strong 200-foot game, is impactful in all areas of the ice. I wouldn't say there's any one thing that Marco Casper is like unbelievable at, but he does pretty much everything really well, and I think that's a great sign when it comes to his game translating to the NHL, especially at the center position. Oftentimes when it comes to players that are drafted into the NHL as centermen, the question becomes, are they going to be a center at the NHL level or are they going to be a winger? When it comes to Marco Casper, I don't even think that's a question. He is going to be a center in the NHL. Now, does he have the upside and the potential to be a number one centerman in the NHL? I don't really think so. I think his game maybe caps out somewhere in between a really high-end number three center or a serviceable number two center. I don't think he really has the game-breaking type of offensive ability 
abilities that you need to be a legit first line center in the NHL. And that's why I have Marco Casper ranked at number four behind another center who I'm going to talk about in a little bit here. But there's no doubt about it. Marco Casper has all the tools to be a very good and very impactful NHLer and the kind of guy you can use in all situations. And you need those kind of players in the NHL. Just because he was selected eighth overall, if he doesn't become an absolute superstar, that doesn't mean he was a bad draft pick. Moving along now to the number three ranked prospect on my list, the other center that I was just referring to, Nate Danielson, who was the Red Wings' ninth overall draft pick from the most recent NHL draft. Nate Danielson is a prospect who, like Marco Casper, already has a pretty well-rounded game. I do think Nate Danielson's offensive game is a little bit more dynamic than Marco Casper, so that's why I have him ranked ahead of Casper on this list, but I think they're right there in the same tier with each other. One of the knocks on Nate Danielson's game is the fact that when the Red Wings selected him with the ninth overall selection in 2023, Nate Danielson was one of the older prospects in the draft. He was just a couple of weeks away from being eligible to be selected in 2022. And for an older prospect, he didn't really dominate the WHL in his draft year like you may expect from a guy selected with this high of a draft pick. He finished last season with 78 points in 68 games for the Brandon Weekings, which is nothing to scoff at, but you do have to consider the Brandon Weekings were an awful team. There wasn't a whole lot of talent around Nate Danielson on that Weekings team last season. He's somebody that that team relied upon to do pretty much everything, be the driving force of offense at five on five, play on both special teams. He was also their captain, so not only was he expected to lead on the ice, but off the ice as well. So I think when you factor in all that, he did pretty well for a bad team in his draft year. Danielson started this season in the WHL for Brandon once again, was a point per game for them through 26 games, but then was traded to the Portland Winterhawks. And since the trade to Portland, I think Nate Danielson has really started to show what he can do with some more talent around him. The Winterhawks are a very good team, and in 26 games with Portland, Danielson has 12 goals and 37 points. That Winterhawks team is primed for a deep playoff run, and I think it's going to be really good for Nate Danielson's development to be able to be a part of something like that, especially after playing on some pretty bad Brandon Weekings teams. I also really liked what I saw from Nate Danielson in the World Juniors this year. He had three points in five games, playing bottom six minutes. He was in more of a shutdown four checking role, and I think he thrived in that role, and that just shows you the versatility of his game. I'll say the same thing about Nate Danielson that I said about Marco Casper. I don't really think he's somebody that we should expect to come in and be, you know, the future number one center for the Detroit Red Wings, but I will say behind Dylan Larkin, I think the Red Wings number two and number three center spots are in really good shape for the future with Nate Danielson and Marco Casper. Getting into my top two ranked prospects now in the Red Wings system. First up at number two, I have Simon Edvinson, a 21 year old left shot defenseman. He was the Red Wings sixth overall draft pick from 2021. And I will say of all the prospects that we've talked about and are going to talk about in this video, Simon Edvinson, I definitely think is the most NHL ready. And it seems like the Red Wings feel the same way as he actually just got called up to the Red Wings today and is expected to play playing the top four tonight against Columbus, which is a welcome sight for Red Wings fans. The defense has been so bad during this recent stretch, and I think calling up a prospect like Simon Edvinson, who's going to be hungry to make an impact and carve out a role for himself at the NHL level, could go a long way in injecting some life back into this team. And even though I only have Simon Edvinson as the number two ranked prospect here in the Red Wings system, I think you can make the argument that he is their most important prospect, just due to organizational depth, like you have most sides on the right side, but man, I've been pretty vocal about it this season. It seems like the Red Wings are just running Cider into the ground. He has really struggled this season for long stretches, and I don't think it's all his fault. Like, the Red Wings are throwing him to the Wolves. He's playing arguably the toughest minutes and matchups in the entire NHL. The Red Wings are in desperate need of another defenseman to step up and either play on the same pair as Mo Cider and take some of that pressure off him, or be able to carry their own pairing and take some of that pressure off the Cider pairing. And I think a lot of Red Wings fans, myself included, are hoping Simon Edvinson can be that guy sooner rather than later. Simon Edvinson really does have an absurd amount of potential at six foot six, 210 pounds. He is such a graceful skater, an incredibly mobile defenseman for his size. He has all the tools to be an absolute monster in his own end. If his offensive game is going to be able to translate to the NHL level, then I think the sky is the limit for Edvinson. And based off of what we've seen from Simon Edvinson offensively since coming over to North America, I think it's a pretty safe bet to say his offense should be just 
just fine at the NHL level. Edvinson led all Grand Rapids defenders in points last season with 27 and 52 games. He's leading all Grand Rapids defenders in points again this season with 29 and 52 games. We have already seen him play a handful of games at the NHL level. He got into nine last season, scored two goals in those nine games, and has an assist in two games with the Red Wings this season. I'm really excited to see what he's going to be able to do when he finally gets a long, extended look at the NHL and an opportunity to play top four minutes like he's getting tonight. I am very high on Edvinson. I think he's going to be an absolute beast, and if you're somebody who thinks that he should be ranked number one on this list, I'm really not going to argue with you because he definitely has a strong case. With that being said, moving on to my number one ranked prospect in the Red Wings system currently, I have Axel Sandin Pelica. 19-year-old right shot defenseman was the Red Wings 17th overall draft pick in the most recent NHL draft. It's already looking like the Red Wings got unbelievable value with Sandin Pelica at number 17, and even at the time of the draft, I think a lot of people were a little bit surprised that Pelica slipped to number 17 and kind of fell into the Red Wings lap. I know there's actually a lot of Red Wings fans that said they wouldn't have been upset or wouldn't have been surprised if the order was flipped and Sandin Pelica was the Red Wings ninth overall selection and Danielson was their 17th. Sandin Pelica is a prolific offensive defenseman with a very heavy shot, great puck skills, he's a strong skater, just a really well-rounded offensive game. In 39 games this season in the SHL, Sandin Pelica is up to 10 goals and 18 total points. He is just one goal shy of tying the SHL record for most goals in a season by a defenseman who's still a teenager. And Sandin Pelica just turned 19, I think, like last week. His head coach in the SHL, who also had Eric Carlson at around the same age, has came out and said that Axel Sandin Pelica reminds him a lot of a young Eric Carlson, which is insanely high praise. If Axel Sandin Pelica at his best is even 75% of what prime Eric Carlson was, then the Red Wings have an absolute gem here. I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys that that means that Axel Sandin Pelica is the next Eric Carlson because I think that's unrealistic and it's setting yourself up for failure, but I'd be lying if I said the trajectory that Axel Sandin Pelica is on doesn't get me very excited. I think without a doubt, this guy projects to be the future power play quarterback in Detroit. Very excited to see how his game translates to North America. I'm kind of expecting him to have a similar route to the NHL as Mo Sider, play in the SHL in his draft plus one year, follow that up with a season in Grand Rapids in his draft plus two year to get accustomed to the North America style and schedule and then be a strong competitor to make the Red Wings lineup the following season. So that is going to wrap up this video ranking the top five prospects currently in the Detroit Red Wings system. I definitely don't claim to be a scout or anything like that and I'll be honest I don't have the greatest knowledge of prospects outside the NHL because covering all 32 teams on this channel that takes a lot of my time up and it kind of gets difficult at times to focus on other leagues and things like that but I do feel like I have pretty good knowledge of the prospects at the very least in the Red Wings system but if you guys want to see more prospect videos like this for other teams or you know ranking the best prospect from every team and things like that then leave this video a like that's the best way to let me know that you enjoyed and I really enjoyed making this video so more prospect coverage is definitely something I'd be open to doing on the channel in the future if you disagreed with my list as always I want to know what you guys are thinking so let me know what your list would look like down below in the comments and most importantly if this was your first time checking out the channel and you want NHL content just like this all year round hit that subscribe button and I'll talk to you all again soon